Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new devlog series. My name is Matthew and I decided to make a smaller game than my last one, if you missed the cancellation announcement. I had a few ideas and the one I am really excited about is a Vectrex game. So this game is going to look and feel like it could be running on a vector cathode ray tube or oscilloscope and everything is going to be built around that it's going to be monochrome it's going to be using this line art style you know things aren't going to be filled in or shaded because that's not how that technology works i've been doing my homework and i could go into this whole long thing about why i think vector graphics are so cool just the idea of retro without pixels but i already did that in like two videos and i'm going to be coming back with another devlog where we look just at that specifically uh, so for now i'm just going to bring up the actual game this actually started as Asteroid Survivors, which was a 20 inch challenge remake I did. Uh, I was targeting 24 hours, ended up being about 30. And the problem with these remakes, if you've ever done one of these, is I leave about 90% of my ideas on the cutting room floor. And for this particular game, I, I was going for a Vampire Survivors remake, but it was enough original ideas that I really liked it and I really wanted to continue with it. For this particular video, the question I want to answer is what's the difference between a game jam game and a real game? I've finished a whole bunch of games at this point, but I haven't got anything on Steam. And so moving from a prototype, a 30 hour make it and throw it away project to a sustainable, you know, medium to long-term game. There's a lot of things you do differently. And the first thing I'm going to do might be surprising. I'm going to throw away the prototype. I'm going to create a brand new project. We'll be calling this Space Rock Survivors. And I'm going to pull in all these old files, but I'm going to shove them into a folder. I'm going to change the color of this as a red folder and it's going to be labeled old and all of these i'm going to preface with an underscore so when i am working in the game i don't really have access to all of these different classes uh, they're hidden away unless i start typing an underscore there and so all of these are going to be deleted eventually but i don't want to throw away the ideas i had i just want to throw away the work i did uh, because this was a prototype it was quick and dirty and there are a huge mess of bugs in this uh, so we are starting over so the first thing I did was lay out the game architecture. I set up all of the components where I think they go. I really spent some time thinking about the collisions and the layers and the shapes and the signals and how all of these different major pieces are going to inter interact with each other. And what I'm making here with this empty scene is basically a blueprint. Another trick I did in Godot, you can add descriptions to the editor. So a bunch of these empty nodes actually have a bunch of text attached to them, sometimes even paragraphs that describe what they do, why they're here, and why it makes sense to do things this way. So taking a very deliberate and slow approach to building this up. Once I have this base structure, I did pull in the player from the old game, so you can see this player moving around in this game scene. Uh, I do have a few colors and I've been messing around with these vector graphics. I'm going to do a lot more there. I did end up taking about an eight hour detour and making a, a vector line 2D node. Uh, this is going to be the subject of its own video. I want to do a whole devlog, probably a month working on this because I really want to make these graphics really cool. Uh, but for now, I did make a simple placeholder that can change the style of the line in the editor in real time. Uh, it also has this ability to draw out the line as you change a slider so i can do cool things like making a placeholder logo uh, you notice again this is just a placeholder because i am bringing up the game i'm going to come back and actually put this stuff in and because i already have a prototype i know what i'm doing i'm not going to waste time on this yet so i'll come back do more work on the vector graphics but i just wanted to start out with this and have something fundamental so as i'm adding all these components they are built on top of this basic technology that i can come back and revisit and rework and expand upon once i have all this together i started adding in all of the menus uh, again this is not the most sexy thing to put in a game but right off the bat i want to make sure all of this is working in my original prototype, one of the biggest sources for bugs were the menus. Uh, I tried doing some fancy things with transitions where I was using a bunch of timers and slow fades, and I ended up having race conditions everywhere where you would start an input, it would start doing something, you'd send another input, and it would queue up or change what it's doing. And so I had a whole bunch of bugs where you could get stuck in the menu, you could die in the menu because you know, your character is visibly present there, you could all these horrible things. And so I imported unit tests into this game. 
Unit tests are this really powerful tool that software developers or engineers use to really make sure that something is stable. And they go, yes, I can trust this. And so I put in these unit tests and I did a whole bunch of various conditions and basically the equivalent of going through and whacking the escape key a bunch of times as I'm loading into the menu and transitioning to the game and running through my upgrade system and all of this stuff to make sure that I can only pause in the right place. Except normally when you're doing that, you just do this once. You know, you're hitting the escape key as you're going through and it seems good, it's fine. Well, later on that system breaks and you haven't been in this code in a long time, you don't know what you're doing, it becomes this huge mess. I now have a unit test that goes through and it emulates these inputs and verifies the output. And so I have a whole bunch of these everywhere and I am extremely confident in my core game script and the menus and the transitions. So this thing that was broken in the prototype is now working and I have confidence. Um, and actually later on in this development, I did break something and instead of having to find it a month later and go, oh man, I haven't dealt with this in a while. Uh, when I broke it, a unit test started failing and I immediately knew I mess something up, I better go fix that. The other thing I'm doing, because this is a real project instead of just a quick game jam, is I'm commenting and documenting my code. I'm going through and I'm using the Godot's auto documentation feature. I just did a video on this, but using that feature to make sure I remember what I was doing. A lot of people are like, oh, make sure your code uh, is self-documenting, it makes sense, the variables are named good. That's fine. But it takes time to go through and read the code and ideally these modules should be black boxes where when I'm done working with the menus and the transitions and all that stuff, I shouldn't need to care how it does what it does. I should be able to just pop open the documentation and see that, yeah, this function transitions from this to this. Cool. I got that. Another thing I'm doing here is adding a bunch of print statements into my code. Now, the problem with print statements, either you add no print statements, which I usually do, or you add a bunch of print statements. And if you add a bunch of print statements, it's the same thing as adding no print statements because your output gets clogged and you can't see what you're doing. I typically will be debugging my code. I'll throw in some print statements. And once I figure out what I'm doing, I will pull those back out and then I'll be back to zero. I don't have any output. But I recently set up this system, a logging by class system. So each individual major module will have all of these little print statements I'm throwing in and I'm going to hold on to these once I add them to the code I don't remove them unless they're egregiously verbose uh, they all are sitting here but I have these selectors where I can go and I can change the level for each individual component of the game so as I'm working on the menus I am setting these print statements to be very verbose and I can see everything that's happening step by step and I can debug things really easily and when I'm done instead of going and removing all that stuff I just change this value to say, hey, I don't want to see that anymore. Another cool thing with this, if I do hit an error, it'll dump the entire print history of the module. It's holding on to that. And so even though it wasn't showing up in the output previously, when there's an error, it goes, oh, you may have actually wanted to know what was happening. Here's everything that happened up to this point. Uh, and so some of these advanced print systems that I've been setting up will be quite useful. Uh, I've already run into it a few times where I had to turn something back on. I had the prints turned off for a particular module, hit an error and said, oh, let's turn that back on. Let's fix that. Uh, at this point, I have this core game loop kind of working if I click on the buttons, but I want to start on the spawn system. Uh, that was another major component of the original game, uh, other than transitioning in and out of menus. Uh, obviously, as the game's playing, you want different asteroids or objects to show up. And so I tried something new and really liked it. I'm going to do it again, uh, but I used an animation player to control these spawn rates. So over the course of 30 minutes, uh, it's actually... 30 seconds, but I divide it by 60, so it becomes 30 minutes. I have uh, various levels of things, so we're constantly spawning X of this and Y of that. And then I also have a call method track that allows me to call a special impulse function that I have. And so the way these things work, they'll combine together where you can spawn a certain base level, but then if I want to have a boss or something, I can call this impulse. And all of this happens throughout an animation cycle. And so for level one, I just click level one play animation and it goes through. There's no code in this. So this saves me from having some massive script that does the same thing. Uh, this is just a, a resource, an animation. And I think it's really useful to sometimes use tools, even in ways you may not think about. 
Uh, typically animation, you'd think of it as moving things that are visible, but in this case, I am animating data to uh, give myself a, a really nice spawn system. I then put in a whole bunch of these debugging things, so you can really see as the spawn system's going and working through. Uh, and then uh, finally, I added in some asteroids that just delete themselves after a certain amount of time, uh, so I can just see it working, uh, but I'm not adding in all the components yet. So that's where I need to go next. Um, I know I want to do a massive overhaul of the weapon system. Uh, this will probably be its own uh, make a prototype, throw it away kind of thing. Uh, so within this game, you know, this isn't going to be a separate project, uh, but I would create a new branch and get my version control software. I would do all the stuff, make a mess of it, go as quick as I can, leave a lot of bugs in the code. And then once I figure it out, pause, throw it away, move back to the main branch and start actually doing this for the final version. And that's gonna be the development cycle for any of these large features. I might do that, uh, do it once, do it a second time, New Game Plus style of development. My goal for the rest of the series is to be a little bit more of a show and tell, a little bit less technical. It's kind of hard to this first video. I didn't have a lot to show because I'm just bringing this game up uh, other than the original prototype. Uh, but going forwards, I want to really do a quick highlight of what I've done in the past month. Uh, I'm hoping to get these out monthly. And then I'm going to be doing a lot of the more technical content within the tutorial series I've already been doing. Uh, so I did that recently. I did my documentation video on how to read Godot's documentation. And in this video, I mentioned that I wrote a bunch of documentation uh, for my individual classes to make sure I can keep on top of them. Uh, so I'm gonna do that kind of stuff going forwards where I'm gonna keep a lot of the technical things out of here and put the technical things in the other series. And so hopefully I can get people who are just interested in the game uh, for the sake of the game, not just people who are developing their own games. Um, obviously I don't mind other developers watching this, but I definitely want to uh, start trying to learn how to do the marketing and uh, appeal to a wider audience and specifically to the audience of gamers, not just game developers. So that is going to be the uh, long-term hopes and goals for this series is that I can get a, a continued interest in this game. Um, and I'm going to be sharing those lessons as I'm learning them, you know, maybe share some, hey, I'm going to try this with marketing and then come back and say, did it work? Did it not work? Uh, but yeah, this is my story of how I'm making my first Steam game. Uh, this is the story of the release that hopefully goes well, but however it goes, this is the story in real time of me working my way through all these things. And uh, like I said, I do have another game uh, in mind, but I really am hoping to be able to get this one on Steam. Uh, this was the simplest of all the options I have. And I think it's really good to start small because I've never put a game on Steam before. Uh, and then I can always come back and do one of those larger games. So that is about it for the first step vlog. Thank you so much for watching. And let me know what you think. I will see you in the next one.